today we are checking out Jefferson City, home of Carson Newman, Carson Newman Eagles. It used to be Carson Newman College, now it's Carson Newman University, but also home to some super cool things. We're gonna drive through Jefferson City. I'm gonna show you what you need to know. Let's go check it out. to Jefferson City, Tennessee. So what we are on right now is 11E. So I'm heading east on 11E and we are not quite in Jefferson City limits, but I wanted to start here so you can kind of see the schools, the hospital. Okay, so if I turn left right now, that's gonna take me at this light, that's gonna take me back roads behind Carson Newman. This, this road will take me to the dam. The hospital is right back there. I don't know if you can see that, but like I said, if I had turned left right there, that's gonna take me on back roads behind Carson Newman and then also out to the dam. You turn off from that road and go out to the dam. So a couple of notes here. These schools, this is Jefferson Elementary and Middle Schools right next to each other. So you've got the middle school first, and then this is the elementary school with the playground in the front. And it kind of looks, I'm, it's, we're in the dead of winter as I'm recording this, so I apologize for that. But basically Jefferson City, we're gonna drive and see Carson Newman. We're gonna take 11E all the way through. 11E is the main road through Jefferson City. It's also a pass through. So you can take 11E from Knoxville, all the way through to Morristown and further. So here is the Jefferson City sign. I love this sign. I think it's so cool. Love that. And then if I start turning left this way, this is where I start seeing there's quite a bit of historic feeling real estate. So older homes, you do have some new like strip malls. So these are, you know, probably less than 10 years old. If I turn right here on 92 South, that's going to take me all the way to 40. We're going to finish going that way. So that's to interstate 40, which is going to be the primary interstate that you would use as you drive by. So a couple things of note, you've got Ashley furniture. There's a workout anytime, which is new, which I think is cool. Like I would have loved that when I was in college here, this light right here, if I turn left, I will very quickly be right at Carson Newman campus. So kind of two main streets that cut through Carson Newman campus. This would be the first one. And then I'll take you down there so you can kind of see it. But right now we're just gonna go through town down 11E. So this Libra hardware has been here forever. Some of this other stuff like the Domino's is new. At one point, this was a K's ice cream back in the day, back when my mom went to Carson Newman. My mom and my uncle and my aunt. But anyways, so this, if I take this light here too, I could also hit Carson Newman campus. And you can briefly see over there, like that building back over there, that is the student SAC, Student Activities Center. I forget what we call it. We call it the SAC, but I think, I don't know what that stands for. Student Activities Center, I guess. Anyways, there's a pool in there and a little gym and a track above the gym. Ran there many a mile back in college. So as you can see, you've got basic, basic fast food. Taco Bell, Burger King, there used to be a, what's the one with the tiny burgers? Oh, a crystal, which is now it looks like, or the, I think that twin dragon used to be a crystal. I don't know. I didn't do crystal. The Sonic, the El Cezanne up here is um, a Mexican restaurant where you can get the best chicken pita nachos. At least back in my day, you could. <laughs> the best chicken pita nachos with like all the queso. All the queso. And then you've got a couple car dealerships here. This is a Chrysler, Dodge, et cetera situation. Big lots, that's pretty much been here forever. You've got a, another Mexican restaurant there. I've not eaten there. That used to be an Italian restaurant. Priceless Foods, you've got a KFC, Hoagie Shop. That used to be a stir fry place basically back in my day. And then you've got a Chevy dealership. So lots of uh, chain restaurants and like some little mom and pop stuff. This is certainly not a dining Mecca for in college. Like we 
Well, we just ate at the, we ate at the cafeteria basically. And then if we were going out to eat, we might go into Morristown. Where did we go out to eat? We went to El Cezanne basically. There was a little place called the Creamery and they had like sandwiches and ice cream and stuff. That's not existing anymore. Quite a bit of turnover in Jefferson City. So any, any of these roads off, these turnoffs, this is going to take you to residential areas. So on either side of this, you've got Carson Newman, you've got, you know, shopping. When I say shopping, I mean like big lots and then you've got residential so that's pretty much what you have but this is not really like where you would necessarily come for work unless you were going to work at Carson Newman or in some of these like strip mall places so again some more strip mall stuff these are all not really chain anything just some restaurants Zaxby's I remember when we got that Zaxby's and we were like oh my gosh we have some place to eat Powell's Bojangles up here we've got Hardee's Wendy's gondolier so that is what was originally in the big lot so wendy's and then the walmart up here that walmart is basically where as a carson newman student we did all of our grocery shopping and like since i've come here there's a lowe's now there's papa john's that used to be a blockbuster by the way shout out to my friend keeper because she worked many an hour at the blockbuster so you've got walmart and then there's a cato a hibbit sports lowe's so this is all on the main main drag a couple nail places jersey mike's that's newer and then a lot of like health places like physical therapy and blah 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 so again this is a lemony this is your main pass through and a lemony i mean sorry jefferson city talbot white pine alpha morristown are all just like one after the other so it's they're not really distinct jefferson city is like a town they do have a main street i will take you there once we go through campus but just want to show you, you know, there's a probably about a mile worth of stuff. And then we're back out into no man's land. So Cherokee Lake is that way. And then there is a little bit of lakefront property. I'll take you to some townhouses that are currently being built, but that are on the water. Sorry, but there is a very minute piece of Jefferson City that's technically waterfront. The Jefferson City kind of sits at the very base of um, Cherokee Lake, which makes sense because you got um, Cherokee Dam just basically outside of Jefferson City. So that would make sense. Now, at some point, we are crossing over into Talbot. I want to show you there's some cars coming out up here. I'll show you, but that's the end of that back road I pointed out when we first started this video. Also, I want to point out these houses back over there. That is all DR Horton development. And DR Horton has several communities here in the Jefferson City, Talbot, Morristown area. This area specifically is called the Lakeway area. So now at some point, like Talbot has started, I believe. It's very much like almost Alcoa Maribel. There's that DR Horton development over there, right back there. And then this right here is where that back road comes out. So anyways, that is 11E going through Jefferson City and we will go back through we'll take back roads and check out curse newman all right we are headed west now as you can see welcoming back into jefferson city which is interesting because some of these have talbot addresses as a side note so like i said this is very like all one kind of melded together so we are on 11e as i said and this time we're going to turn off we're not going to go back down 11e we're going to turn off and go on kind of the back road I pointed out. We're gonna check out Carson Newman, check out some lake frontage, and then we are gonna to head towards I-40 and check out Patriot Hills and the high school. So I'm gonna turn here. So this is old AJ. Old AJ goes basically from here and loops back to um, 11E essentially is what is happening. So notice Dollar General. This road is gonna feel a bit more um, rural uh also want to point out to you that here is that dr horton um community that i pointed out earlier so you can see you've got two one-offs here but for the most part it's a you know hardcore neighborhood um so noticing farmland noticing some like commercial industrial type stuff some storage big like rv storage looking places some silos so 
Um, this definitely feels very farmy, farm-like, because that's what these places are, farms. And so this road, old AJ, runs behind Walmart. It runs behind, as I said, Carsuman. It's gonna hit on, into like the main road of, it's, I think it becomes Main Street for like a block. And honestly, it may not even be called Main Street, but in my mind, it's Main Street, I guess, because it just is like an old downtown. A lot of times people will ask like, where are cute downtowns in East Tennessee? And I frankly think we don't really have great ones. Like Clinton is okay. Morristown has an old downtown. Jefferson City has one. Dandridge is cute, but it's very small. Like they're all very small, Loudoun. Now that I'm like naming them, it sounds like they're a lot, but I just want to set the record straight that they're very small. It's not like, wow, this is, you know, going forever. Now, if I turn right really on any of these streets, like if I go out down Tar Road long enough, I will hit Cherokee uh, Lake because Cherokee Lake is back that way. Obviously you cannot see it now, but I just want to point out to you that we are close in proximity to the lake. Again, the dam is kind of sits at the base of Jefferson County in Jefferson City. And I think that I think the dam actually technically is in Jefferson City. Or it's definitely in Jefferson County. Oh show. Or maybe it's in Granger actually now that I say that. It's right outside Jefferson City. Okay. Okay. So old AJ still this is again that back road cut through. This would be what to use for now that sign says Jefferson City limit. So it's all it's all sketchy. Now notice real estate here. So these are 1970s, 1980s builds basement ranchers you've got some duplexes here the closer we get to this road will take you to um walmart if we turn there takes you to is that right gosh i should know this the amount of times i've been down this road to the walmart i think i'm i think that was a little bit early look at a map put the walmart in your gps you'll get there but all of these roads if i turn left are going to take me back to 11 8 essentially if i turn right i'm going to go further into more rural and then also towards the lake so you're seeing again you're seeing some like development going on not a ton this road i used to use a lot i would take this road like i used to in college I spent a lot of time at the um, Girls Inc. volunteering, and so I would take this road back home. So you're seeing an old ballpark, you're seeing these old, um, these Jefferson City Mossy Creek. So Mossy Creek is part of Jefferson City. Battle of the Mossy Creek, December 29th, 1863. Heading toward, you can start to see there's buildings right there. I don't know if you can see, but that is part of Carson Newman campus. I'm going to point out this building right here. Been to a Christmas party there before. Super cool. That is the Glenmore House Museum. Like I said, I've been to a Christmas party there. This is the road that you would turn to go to Walmart. But that's a super fun... There's East Main there, so I must be right about this Main Street thing. Duplexes. So a lot of um, rental stuff because now we are coming towards campus. So you're going to see apartments. A lot of these properties are either professors that live in them or they are rental properties. Um, I knew some people that rented multiples of these houses. Like when I was here in college, the soccer team girls were in one of them. Um, okay. So essentially what we've got is I'm going to turn, we're going to come back onto the, actually we're going to go down this road and then we're going to loop back around. So this is downtown Jefferson city. Like I said, this right here, right now, where we are, that's it. The health hut, um, this cafe, artisan pizza, said to be really great. This has yoga and barber shop. Those are new. I don't know those. If I keep going straight, that's going to take me back, loop back around to 11 E where I showed you earlier at the very beginning of this video. Okay. So we are coming on to campus, Carson Newman campus. So what you have real estate wise are old houses again some rentals mostly professors and some of this is like owned by the college so we are now on carson Newman campus and you see buildings the administration building this is a girls dorm butler um you've got the admin building henderson hall that's like where all the humanities are in there and then here's the library there that's swan 
one of the girls' dorms. And then this is the music building there. And then we've got the old, this is the old like home ec business building. And I think they've changed that now. That's student center straight down there. You've got First Baptist Church. More like campus buildings. This is Burnett. So this is where my dorm was in there. Um, and then I'm going to take a turn here. So just off of campus, you've got like these two houses on either side are Carson Newman owned. And then you've got these residents here. Now, most of these are rental homes. So if you're wanting to be, if you're wanting an investment property, you want something along these roads. Now that's a new construction. Somebody's torn down what was there before. My senior year, we rented a house down this, is it down this street or the next street over? It's funny how I have no memory anymore. Um, I think it was this house. Yeah, it was right down here. This house, we rented that. Um, back in the day, I lived in that house. And then there's like a, walkway down here but like i said if that's king street so king street that would be a great location for purchasing a rental property because it is so close to campus it's going to be cheaper your rent for what you're going to charge depending on what you buy the property for is going to be cheaper than what you, someone would pay for uh, like a dorm i think our rent was like 400 dollars at the time um and that was like total all in 200 each pretty insane right pretty insane i'm sure there's been it's a lot higher now but i'm just telling you king street great place to buy a rental any of these streets just off campus would be awesome because you can walk you could ride your bike we always walked um like we didn't have to park because even because you're gonna have to walk on campus anyways class to class so people just know like i'm gonna be walking it's fine so and then this street that we just went down is mount castle my sister rented a property on Mount Castle. Oh, and she lived on Mount Castle actually, because once they graduated, they lived on Mount Castle, which that would have been a great rental property actually that they had. So then you can see we're coming back. We just came from this way and now we're gonna make a loop right through campus. Again, there's First Baptist Church. So the First Baptist Church isn't necessarily affiliated with the campus, but like that's where a lot of the like, Baptist student ministry stuff happens. So now this is saying veteran center. So that's where the home ec classes and business classes used to be, but now there's a business building. Um, and then this is like kind of the getting into the main heart of the campus. This is one of the original campus buildings. That's the original gym in there. And then you've got Henderson hall up on the hill and a little photo op there. And then here is the cafeteria. And then straight ahead is your student center. And then behind that is the um, football stadium. So this, in the student center, that is, there's like a little cafe in there. There's a lot of the athletic stuff and all of that. This is the art building there. And then you've got, this is psychology, sociology in that building. Tennis courts here. There you can see the football stadium. And then Henderson Hall there. This is your math building. And then it says Science Center. Well, that's where I took all my math classes, got all my math credits. And then you've got um, Drama and Ted Russell Center. That's a new building. Alumni Residence Hall, that is a men's dorm. And then Heritage is back here, which word on the street is they're about to try tear this down and build a new dorm. So that's this is men. So the Boys are on one side and the girls are on the other, just like a middle school dance. Oh, house for rent. Do, 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 do. Can I go this way? We're gonna go this way because I want to get you close to the stadium. I actually think the stadium is super nice and they've done a lot of updating since. So my mom went to Carson Newman. I grew up coming and visiting Carson Newman. So this is your stadium there. It's pretty nice. Um, I think it's nice for like a small community college. Look, a softball, a softball. Um, and so that big building on the hill, this reminds me of Ayers Hall, like if you're familiar with UT. Here's your baseball stadium, softball stadium. And again, back to the tennis, that's the back side of the student activity center. And then that's the back, back side of the science and math. But I think there's a brand new science building, there's a new nursing building. So that 
building right there is where like all that stuff used to be. This was where science, math, nursing was in this building. And then Henderson Hall, that's where all the English and like religion classes are. Some drama classes are in there. So, I mean, that's the bulk of campus. I did not show you the business building. It's kind of back behind all this. So that is Carsoom and campus. And then we are back right into churches. You got First Presbyterian here. You've got First United Methodist. And technically Carson Newman is a Baptist college. Now this place, revisions, decor, furniture, gifts, old city hall building. That is something to check out. I've not been in there. Gotta check it out. Gotta check it out. Now we are going to go back down Main Street. We're gonna head towards the lake. I'm gonna show you a little bit of what's going on over there. And then we are gonna head to 92. We're gonna see um, a DR Horton Community Founders Point. So you can check that out. We're gonna see some real estate in Patriot Hills. So there's a lot of turnover here on the street in terms of businesses. When I was going to school here, none of this stuff existed. Like the buildings were obviously here, but actually like businesses. So it's kind of cool to see that. That's a post office, by the way. So it's got some little like, oh, it looks historic. You know what I mean? A little charm like that. Foxy Paws Pet Spa. Hmm. Out of town, the main point of going this way is so I can show you like a small bit of lake frontage that you would find in Jefferson City on Cherokee. And we're going to try not to disturb anyone's property, which we're not. You know what I'm saying. Turn here onto row 10. So noticing lots of small old houses. When you are closer into town, that is the majority of what you're going to find. When I say older, I mean 1960s, 1970s, 1980s. And then you have some like 100 year old things like this guy here. Old, which obviously at some point has been added on to. But I'm just saying like all these right here are 1980s, 70s builds. Um, noticing a lot of basement ranchers. This Caroline Drive. Also noticing it's not really flat. Just want to point that out. Um, you can get some flat, which I'll show you in Founders Point, the DR Horton neighborhood. There are some flat lots there. So that's a positive. But just want to show you kind of what to expect real estate wise. I've actually been in that house. I've shown the house before. Lots, again, basement ranchers. And I, I point that out because that, when you see a basement rancher, it pretty much is probably meaning like it's not been built on a flat lot. So, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I'm just saying, you know, temper your expectations about flat lots in East Tennessee. I don't hear that as much anymore, but that used to be a huge complaint of people. Like there's no flat yards here. Well, we're basically in the mountains. Or just outside of them right so you know okay so as we've continued to drive to behind these houses to the left is the lake and i'm going to take you over there you can kind of see it in the distance but i also want to point out to you the amount of mud you see versus the amount of lake that you see so cherokee Douglas, Norris, they all drop in the winter. They're all part of the TVA watershed system. And so I just want to point that out to you now. Straight ahead, that is all lake. All of that over there. Lake, lake, lake. Now, lake frontage here. I've actually been in that house right down there. It's really cool. Very custom. It's all like a, it's a basement ranger. It's a super cool house. So that is, I mean, these are great lots. They're, these are big lots on the lake. These are going to be a million plus typically, depending. These back here, notice like these don't have year round water. I don't know if you can tell that, but like their, their docks are sitting on the side, like in the backyard. So that is, not that that's the extent of 
like frontage in Jefferson City, but I mean, that's a pretty good view of what it's like. But again, when you're thinking about lakefront property, you want to also think about year round water. If you require it, if you want it, you know, what does that mean for the location of where you purchase a house essentially? Um, so I just want to point that out for you. Okay, so this is Cherokee Bay, obviously will be gated. This is a lakefront community in Jefferson City. You can see that that is Cherokee Lake. So I wanna point out to you that yes, it is waterfront. However, it is not as if you have waterfront year round. So these are townhouses, condos, I guess you could say. Um, they range from mid fours up into 800,000 depending on the lot itself. So you can see we were just actually driving on the opposite side over there. So I want to point out to you that yes, this is lake frontage. However, you do not have year round lake front. And if you're on one of these lots here, like you're going to be seeing the lake, but I just want to, you know, as you're thinking about buying lakefront property, that's a question you want to ask yourself. Like, do I require year round water so this is looking back over but so like i said this is a super cool community waterfront these are going to be all townhouses it's like condos two-story plus basement and then just some single level some of them will be waterfront like here but i just so it's december like dead of winter right now so this in the summer will all be water which is, will be gorgeous this will be essentially maintenance free living so $300 a month HOA which will cover a good bit of exterior type stuff there will be a walking trail and a marina type situation so th these are some of the two-story plus basement those are actually um, 3,500 square feet so um, again this will be water too in the summer but I just want to point out for you you know fact check about year-round water so that is one kind of new construction lakefront option in Jefferson City. And then I want to show you this neighborhood as well that is kind of pretty characteristic of other options besides like what's right around campus is more a traditional type home. And you can see in this neighborhood, and this is pretty typical, I feel, of a lot of Jefferson City real estate is you have a diversity of everything here is pretty much custom built this isn't just like like this home is obviously a different very different style than like what's across the street so custom built kind of one-offs big yards pretty characteristic of options that you could find i mean these yards are huge right so if you're thinking like i want something more affordable than knoxville and i want a really nice yard then i certainly would consider jefferson city now i will say that not a ton of inventory exists in this type of home so i just want to make you aware that like this is a thing here in this area and then you've got like newer homes you know a, just all kinds of just different real estate within a single kind of neighborhood i guess you could say so definitely certainly a plus about this area is like the size of the lot um, and the options and diversity of properties so yeah pretty cool so off of 11e we are turning on to 92 so this takes us to i-40 so from jefferson city anywhere if you're wanting to get to the interstate you're going to well i guess i'm sure there's other roads to get to 40 i'm just telling you this would be the most efficient i also want to tell you that I have gotten a speeding ticket on this road when I was in college, so just be careful. Watch this. Mind the, mind the speed limit, if you will. So I want to point that out to you. Mostly what we're going to see here are neighborhoods off of the street. I'm going to take you to Patriot Hills, which is a golf course community. I do want to show you on this road, you've got, this is the Jefferson City Fire Hall, the City Hall. Um, this is where, these are newer buildings where the police are located um, and then at this light is the Jefferson City Community Center so in there there is an indoor pool it's a basically like think like a YMCA super nice pool actually and I used to go there in college when I hurt my knee and I couldn't run I would come swim in that pool every morning I got a membership and it's pretty nice I mean I think it's nice for what it is think like it's got a it feels like a small YMCA 
Okay, the other thing I want to show you is just off 92, that right there, that neighborhood, we're going to go over there. That's called Founders Point. That is a DR Horton neighborhood currently at the time at the making this video, December 2023. DR Horton is still building in this neighborhood. Most of these homes are 2022 and newer. Um, this is characteristic of a DR Horton community. So I just want to give you an example of what this looks like when you think dr horton this is pretty much what they're going to be so a kind of neutral color palette you do notice that there are you know the yards are mostly small for the most part and i actually just sold this property on the corner so actually this one just closed so that was a resell it closed at 360 they bought it for 335 I want to say, but they have an awesome yard. Um, you can get new um, properties in this neighborhood. Um, in the low 300s, there's one on Aspen Drive for 305 and brand new one. So depending on, typically you're going to pay 330-ish, depending on what it is, that would be probably my anchor price point for something in this neighborhood. Now, there is a diversity of house plans, right? So that's obviously single story. And then you've got the two story traditional. Some of those are five bedrooms. Some of them are three with a loft. Some of them are five with a loft. So like the one I sold, for example, it was the Hayden floor plan and it sold, like I said, a resale at 360, which is actually good because that's not really what you're paying for a brand new one. Um, but again, they had done quite a bit of updates and put like a really nice patio and whatnot something that you're going to see in all pretty much new construction neighborhoods is that right there which is a community retention pond so um just want to sh show that to you that that is a thing so yeah this is a typical dr Horton community if you're buying new think 300,000 roughly for that property so that's founders point it also continues up this way up the street as well um also mossy creek mini golf is back behind there i don't know if you can see it very well but that is a mini golf place so i want to point that out so as we go further out and mossy creek mini golf is literally just off the street so um that's something certainly to check out so we are headed towards 40. nail spa i don't know if that was there when i lived in Jefferson City. Now, pretty much, like I said, from here to 40, you have residential real estate, a diversity of residential real estate, everything from, you know, DR Horton new construction to 1970s builds. We're going to go through Patriot Hills, which is a golf course community that I've mentioned. So yeah, just a diversity of options. There are some neighborhoods where they are literally on the side of a cliff. So if you were thinking about going out this way, I would get on the Google Maps, I would see exactly where it is, see if you can tell about the view, about the driveway, etc. If you care about that, some people don't care, but I'm just saying, keep that in mind as you are looking. And some, there's some like one-off new construction up there. Those are probably mid threes if I had to guess. I feel like for the most part, the days of like high, high 200s are gone. It's possible, but probably not new construction. So if, like these houses up there, they are, I've been in several of those and they are intense. And then you can see like this house over there, it's up on the hill. These kind of sit up. So just know, just be aware that like a steep neighborhood and a steep driveway it doesn't look crazy but some of those houses in there i'm telling you you're like oh i will never drive down that driveway or if you always want to be able to say i can't get out when it snows then maybe you buy that because that's a legitimate thing you there's no way that you're going to get out of that driveway when it snows i mean i'm just saying i'm just saying for all my teacher friends out there actually anyone you don't even have to be a teacher to, you know, claim a snow day. I mean, actually, if you're a teacher and you got a snow day, it doesn't matter about your driveway. So maybe you don't want to be a teacher and you want a driveway that <clears throat> is bad for the snow. 
You know what I mean? So this is pretty much this entire road out to the interstate. So I'm going to turn you off and we're going to go into Patriot Hills right up this road. All right. So see this right there. That is a golf course. And that is kind of the back side of a neighborhood called Patriot Hills. Patriot Hills. When I looked before the making of this video, I saw two homes for sale in Patriot Hills. One listed at 1.6 uh, and one listed at 1.1. These do have nice large yards. I also love Patriot Hills for the fact that talk about getting a workout, which I know is probably a very psychotic thing to say, but that just tells you how I am. I, in my dreams, live in a giant neighborhood where I could go run for miles. And actually in college, a friend of mine and I, we rented for a semester, or actually it was for the school year. I was just studying abroad for a semester. We rented a the house. So there's Patriot Hills, there's a little sign. We rented a house in this neighborhood because the owner, she was gonna be like gone for the year uh, in Florida, I wanna say. And um, so we lived in here in college. I mean, it was pretty like amazing. Think about going from a dorm to living in here, literally insane. So that's a new construction property there. Most of what we find in Patriot Hills is not going to be new construction. Think big yards. There's a diversity of real estate is what I want to say. So we just saw that modern house and now we see that 1970s basement rancher. And now we see this early 2000s brick house. Here's the clubhouse. Patriot Hills Golf Club. Look at that thing. That's new. That did not exist when I lived here. Lots of brick, couple vinyls, but a lot of brick. Really nice properties. Again, my, I just, I like this neighborhood because like I said, there are some massive hills you could walk for days. Um, and I just geek out on that kind of thing. I'm like, oh my gosh, we could go forever here. And um, big yards for sure, newer, property there some of these have awesome views because of how they sit up pretty high um lots of houses with pools you know that whole thing but certainly a nice neighborhood like i said lots of brick not really like restrictions on like style of house because here we just have something that looks more of like a log cabin except with brick um and then we've got a barn dominium here so is that the Barnuminium or that's just someone's, see that's new too. Here's the golf course there. Look at, it looks like a Barnuminium. I don't think that goes with the house. So obviously it's not like there's crazy architectural restrictions in here. That's interesting. Very interesting. And then straight ahead mountain views. It's a bit overcast today, but like, when it's a clear day, the straight up mountains, straight up mountains. I think independence is going to loop us back to the front. I forgot. Constitution, independence, Patriot Hills. Do you see the theme? Do you see the theme? Ranch home. Not a ton of those here. Um, okay. This is the one here on the left that is listed for sale. That is uh, 1.6 million. So you can see that this is a bit higher level of property than some of the others. Now it does back up right to the golf course and it is beautiful. So that one, then look at the mountain views. Stunning, stunning. That's the back of that one. Awesome garage, bow show. So as I said, I mean, large yards, some of them have great mountain views. Most of these homes are oversized and a good number of these are, I think, late 90s, early 2000s. The newer construction stuff is more of a one-off. Some with pools, etc. Very little stucco, very little stucco. Someone commented on one of my other videos about they're afraid of, like they're used to stucco houses. Oops, please hold. That was a exotic car delivery truck. 
Um, I think someone's getting like an old, old, old Porsche. Anyways, again, mountain views, stunning. See, can you imagine how awesome of a hill this would be? There's someone's pool, someone's boat, someone's RV. So not, this is a good example of like, yes, there's an HOA here, but it's like, you can still have your boat and your RV and you can be free. So I just want to just say that you can be free, you know? Yeah. We don't want to go that way. We don't want to go that way. Um, I've been in this house too. They have an awesome backyard in the house actually. Um, awesome backyard. Is it that one? No, not that. I'm confused. I'm confused. I think this is a street I lived on. Bicentennial? Colonial? I hope you're picking up that theme. Um, I've been in that house too actually. Been in there. <gasps> that's it. That's where I lived in college. That one in the stucco house. Oh, that's what I was saying. Um, yep. Back in the day. Back in the day. Pretty swanky. I, I got lucky on that one. And it was because my friend knew the lady, not I. Um, so that was kind of cool. Um, but you know what? We never had anyone over. Maybe we had our friend, maybe one person over. <laughs> we were pretty low key. Anyways, so that's Patriot Hills. Oh, stucco. Yeah, I keep saying. Okay. Someone was saying that they're afraid of how homes are built in Tennessee. But I want to remind you that stucco is, does not thrive in a super humid, moist climate such as rainy climate such as East Tennessee. It's not ideal. It's not ideal. Um, so when you are thinking about that and if you are partial to stucco, I would say be very careful and... You know, people even have like a stucco inspection done. I always thought this house down here on the, oh, they've painted white. Um, I think this house is pretty cool. I'm not sure if I like that white on the front. It used to be all that dark wood color. Pretty. But I still, I still can get down to the log cabin. Okay. Well, that is Patriot Hills. I'm going to show you Jefferson County High School. We're going to continue down 92. We are trekking towards 40 and we're coming to the end of this Jefferson City tour. Um, I'm curious your thoughts if you're like, oh, it's horrible or and also this is a horrible weather day. It's literally the dead of winter. But I felt like there's no time like the present. If not now, when? If not you, who? You know what I'm saying? I'm basically just a motivational speaker over here. So the high school, Jefferson County High, so we saw the middle and elementary schools for uh, Jefferson City, and now we're gonna see Jefferson County High School. Jefferson County Schools has one high school, and it is the Jefferson County High School. Um, it is not like Knox County, where there's multiple high schools. Notice, like, it's completely different real estate across the street. So certainly the takeaway is you have real estate at every price point from, I think you could find some stuff in the twos, I sold a house two years ago at 247 and it was a 1200 square foot ranch home. 247, no garage on like 0.3 of an acre. That was two years ago. Probably now it would be more high twos, maybe a 290, probably still under 300. Okay, so here's the high school right there. There's the co-op over there, right over there. Um, high school is big and I've been in there. It's actually, pretty nice considering I feel like some of our local high schools are so drab and it's actually pretty decent um pretty large so we are going to make our way to the interstate we are almost there and yeah I mean I think that's all the major points we've mostly hit I want to give a shout out again to Mossy Creek um mini golf because I didn't show you very well because I passed you. I didn't want to double back, so I just want to apologize and acknowledge, but I do want to say it does exist as an activity to do. And there's another DR Horton community right there. You can tell it's DR Horton. Just look how it looks. Threes. Low threes to mid threes, really. Dollar General. Now, what I will also say is if I keep going straight, that is going to take me to Dandridge, downtown Dandridge. Dandridge is a part of Jefferson County, but is a Douglas Lake community. So the further we go this way, essentially, I guess we're going, we're certainly going east. I guess we're going southeast from Jefferson City. There's another DR Horton community right there. 
back over there. Um, the further we go east away from Jefferson City, like this is going towards Douglas Lake, Sevier County. If we turn onto 40 this way, that takes us to Asheville and takes us north. If we go this way, this is taking us west, back to Knoxville, back towards basically everything west. So Knoxville, Nashville, Atlanta. So this exit is 417, Jefferson City exit, McDonald's, Perkins. Back in the day, that's literally all that there was. There's a Rude Tuesdays here now, and you've got a Subway. There's also a seafood restaurant, which I've never been to. I did have a friend that worked there as a waitress, though, in college. Um, who's also now a real estate agent. Anyways, whatever. It's a small world. It's a small world after all. So Perkins, it's a bakery, essentially. Like I said, there's a Ruby Tuesdays. You've got a Hardee's. There is a really nice Food City or Kroger straight ahead. Um, although, again, at Carson Newman, we're not going that far. So, anyways, that is your Jefferson City video driving tour. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm gonna keep this on for a second so you can see like gas station, subway. There are a couple like rando hotels, like there's a Hampton Inn, and then there's one on the other side, a little Ford dealership. So Jefferson City, that's all she wrote. All right, what did you think? Is Jefferson City the place for you? We are super close to Knoxville, we're super close to Morristown, super close to Douglas and Cherokee Lakes, more close to Cherokee. So anyways, let me know your thoughts and I'll see you next time.